So here we go. The session is now being recorded. Just uh, a reminder that uh, because the recording, everything you say or type will be recorded with your name forever attached to it. So just remember the audience. Be uh, Conduct yourself in a professional manner and uh, respectful of uh, class environment and others. I am going to allow the uh, audio. So if you want to unmute yourself to ask a question, you may do so. Uh, but if you're not uh, asking a question, please remain muted. Uh, the background noise sometimes causes uh, feedback and so on. Okay, so last week, uh, oh, a word about the assignment. So assignment number four, uh, I have not marked it yet. Um, I downloaded and I started getting ready and I should have it done, I hope, uh, this evening, if not uh, tomorrow evening. So we should have the results this week. The results of assignment four have no bearing on assignment five. They're, I, I, they're not independent of each other, but uh, if there's something wrong with the finished ground surface, it's not going to affect uh, the pipes that we're doing right now. Okay, so um, I'm going to do my best to get it back to you this week, uh, but really there's no rush. You don't need to know the results of assignment four to do assignment five. Assignment six, however, requires assignment four results, so I'll, I'll make sure we get that done. So um, assignment number five is the pipe input. I've provided you with the design, uh, the size and the slope of each pipe for both sanitary and storm uh, sewer systems. And, and then based on that design, I provided you the, uh, the upstream invert of the existing pipe you're connecting to. And I, uh, I suggested that you calculate all the inverts by hand as a separate exercise. So you don't have to do that, but I think when you, when you start using the software I'm about to show you, uh, the pipe network, uh, functions, it's um, it's meaningful to see that what you're calculating in Civil 3D is actually giving you what you're expecting. Uh, so, you know, I, I still do this even when I design uh, today. I sometimes, uh, you know, calculate my inverts and I check it. I'll show you here. Um, I'll just give you a quick... Uh, uh, sorry. Wrong one. Still getting used to this. Okay, I'll do it with a share. Hang on a second. Sorry. Okay, so can you see, can everybody see my hand there very quickly? Yeah, it looks like you're, we're good. Okay, so I actually went through the calculation by hand myself, right? I did the hand calc like I suggested, okay, based on my uh, site and my uh, inverts. Um, so I suggest you do the same. So now when I go through this calculation or when I do this uh, um, exercise, as I calculate inverts, I can see uh, that the results match my manual calculations, assuming you did the manual calculation correctly. So let's get right into it. I'm going to start with my, uh, I'm going to share my AutoCAD screen. Again, if you have any questions, just uh, either pose it in the chat or you can unmute yourself um, if you want to ask a verbal question. Okay, looks like we're about half the group's here, so I'm going to get started. Um, so I'll share my entire screen, and here's my AutoCAD screen. Can everybody see my AutoCAD screen? Hang on right now. Does everybody see that? I hope, just give me a quick yes in the chat. Yeah, okay, good. So I got that chat going here, okay. So as a result of the second assignment, you had your pipes laid out. Remember, we laid out the pipes on either side of center. So here's the center line, the sanitary pipe on one side, storm on the other, one and a half meters uh, from the center line. Uh, which side was the sanitary going to be on? It was going to be where the sanitary sewer is and where the storm sewer is. So you didn't really get to choose which side of center your sand and storm was going to be on, which also determines that your water main is going to be uh, on a certain side based on uh, the relationship between the three pipes. So we're only discussing the gravity sewers, sand and storm. So we've sketched them in, OK? 
Okay, we've uh, we've drawn them. Okay, um, and all I have is lines and circles. Okay, lines and circles for all of the uh, sewers. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna put this on a frozen layer. We only want to look at the at the uh, at the sewers. Let me get rid of this. And I'm gonna do the sanitary sewer. It, everything I do for the sanitary sewer has to be repeated for the storm. Okay, so you'll see that. Uh, let me just put this on a frozen layer. Frozen layer was going to be. Where is it? Uh, hang on a second. Home. I'll put this on the same layer as the corridor just temporarily. Okay. Do it. Hang on. So this. Okay, I'm going to put this on a frozen layer. You don't have to do this, but I just want to minimize the clutter. Uh, so I'll put this on the corridor layer. It's frozen. It's on a frozen layer, so you won't see it. Okay. Same thing. I'm going to do the same for storm. Okay. I'm going to get rid of the storm sewer. I just want to see the sanitary sewer, even the street names in the way. Okay. So I've laid out my sanitary sewer. Okay. With lines and circles. Okay, that's the starting condition. So this is a result of the work you did in assignment two. Now, if you didn't get perfect on the layout in assignment two uh, of the sewers, uh, it, not that it doesn't matter, but it's not that critical. You need something in plan, but obviously if you're gonna have an error in the plan, you wanna fix that before you digitize. You can adjust it after, uh, but I find that the plan layout of the pipe is easier done with just lines and circles using AutoCAD versus manipulating the database of maintenance holes and pipes that we're going to create. Okay, so you'll see what all this looks like when uh, when we're done. At the end of the day, the the this layer, the lines and the circles, so I'm going to turn them off. I, I you could do one of two things. You can delete the the items, or you can uh, put and freeze them. It's up to you, right? So right now they're just a guide as to where everything goes. Once we've digitized the system, we're literally going to trace those maintenance hole positions. Uh, then we will. Um, uh, we can abandon this. Okay. Um, again, like I said, I usually like to keep them uh, for a while in case they, um, in case I need to go back to it. But generally speaking, once the database has been created, you don't need them anymore. Okay. So there is an, um, there is some documents online. So let me show you that. I posted, uh, I posted um, online for module five this is the stuff i uploaded so uh remember the uh, pdfs they're numbered starting at zero one two three four five there is a a, um, a number uh 11. so it's a one page uh instruction okay i'm not going to read this but you, you'll have it for reference i'm going to basically go through all these steps and describe everything. And this is how you create one pipe network. So everything you do here, you do it once for sand and then once again for storm, okay? So there is a list of uh, procedure, what to do first, what to do next and so on, okay? It really starts right here. Uh, you know, it t tells you, to, uh, you know, turn off the proposed road corridor, the existing ground temporarily, like turn the visibility off so it's not in your face. It's, it's not making, it's not cluttering the screen. Create a new layer for the corridor model. If you haven't done it, freeze it. And then in tool space, this is where it starts. In tool space, right click on the pipe network. So that's where I'm gonna start. I've already cleaned up my view. Okay, so that's available, it's online. So here's how you do it. A Couple of things to remember. When you digitize your pipe network, you always wanna trace the system from the beginning of flow to the end. So from upstream to downstream. So in this case, I know all the pipes are flowing from the cul-de-sac all the way to the intersection we've created. So I'm going to start tracing the system from the top and I'm going to go in the direction of flow. If you go backwards, if you go backwards, then all the terminology that I'm going to talk about is going to be backwards. Okay. So and if you remember, and let me show you this. If you remember, I've already given you some information, but we'll do it again. If you have a maintenance hole flowing to a maintenance hole, if the flow, if the flow is in this direction, then this is the upstream invert of the pipe and this is the downstream the downstream invert of the pipe these are the industry terms okay in civil 3d instead of upstream and downstream they use different words for the to mean the same thing upstream is the start of the pipe and the downstream end is the end of the pipe 
Okay, so this is the civil 3D term. Okay, so this is how we talk about an industry, upstream and downstream invert. In civil 3D, the starting invert and the ending invert. Okay, why they don't use the same terminology, I don't know, but you just have to be familiar with it. So when I say start, it means the higher of the two inverts, right? Starting the flow, end the flow. And then on the next, the next pipe coming out, if I was coming out this way, this would be the start of the next pipe, and this would be the end of the next pipe, and so on. Okay, so those are the terms I'm going to use. So when you digitize, if you're digitizing a system, when you're digitizing a system, if it's flowing this way from left to right, this is the start, this is the end. This is the start, this is the end. We always digitize in the direction of the flow. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to go click, 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 and stop. Same thing for the storm. Okay, so always start at the upstream invert at the start of the first pipe and then work your way downstream, okay? And then when I say, you know, when I'm pointing at a pipe and I say the start invert, you'll know it's the upstream invert. If you digitize it backwards, then it's it, technically it's flowing uphill according to the hydraulics of the situation. So that's, not, that's the, not the intent. The geometry will work, but if you were to use this pipe network to do some flow analysis, which AutoCAD Civil 3D can do, um, then everything seems kind of backwards, okay? So we will not use the hydraulic, uh, the hydraulic um, uh, calculator in Civil 3D. We're only using it to do our drafting. Okay. In industry, I don't know too many people who use the system in Civil 3D. There are other softwares that do a better job. And one of the simplest things you can do for a local sewer is just use a spreadsheet. And you'll see that next semester. Have you started using a spreadsheet to calculate uh, pipe uh, flow and slope for Q and V? a design sheet for storm and sanitary. Have you done that in MPT yet? Or did you just do a manual sheet and calculate everything by hand? Anybody? In your MPT class, are you using design sheets? For sand and storm flow and pipe design? Okay, so you're already doing it. Okay, we're, obviously we're not gonna do it in this course, but next semester you'll have to do it. I'll talk more about it. Uh, so, um, Sumitra and Samuel, are you using a spreadsheet, like a hard copy piece of paper, or are you using an Excel sheet? Excel or paper? Design sheet and Excel. Okay, so we're going to do the same. Okay, oh, both. Okay, good. So we, we, we will do, uh, we're going to use the uh, spreadsheet for sure next semester. I'll give you a blank with the proper title for the municipality and so on. Okay, but you have to do all the math uh, yourself. Again, that's beyond the scope of this course. So you're, you're, you're learning how to do that uh, in MPT. Once you have the size and slope of each pipe from that exercise, then you can go and draft it, which is what we're doing. So we're designing the geometry, the inverts. I know the sizes and slopes, remember. And just to refresh your memory, the sanitary sewer, they're all 250 pipes, except the last one is a 200. And they're all at half percent, except the last one, it's going to be at 1%. Okay, so just to remind you. Okay, so let's digitize the system. So here's how it goes. Okay, and this again are the step-by-step -step instructions in that uh, number 11 PDF that I posted. So if we go to tool space, we scroll down to pipe networks, click on there, should be blank, right? Networks, you go to networks, you right click and you use create pipe network by layout. Okay, that's the function you're gonna start with. Okay. Now, before I start, I'm gonna set my O snaps. And I'm going to set my O snaps to center. I want to snap to the center of all the circles that I drew. And then I'm going to start this. So right click, create the pipe network by layout. When you do that, you're going to get this dialog box. Okay, so there's a few things to change here. The first one is the network name. So this is the sanitary system. I'm going to use a three letter S-A-N. That's one industry way of naming the sanitary sewer, three letters. Another way you might see is S sewer, four letters. S sewer, S S W R or S A N. I prefer S A N, but you could do it either way. What you don't want to do here is put in the whole word sanitary or sanitary sewer. Just three or four letters should do. And uh, this is one of the most classic uh, naming uh, conventions, just three letters, S A N. For storm sewer, it'll be S T, T as in Tom, M, storm, S T M. Uh, the reason for the short name on the network is because this 
text string that you're typing here is actually going to be used in one of the labels. So if you use a long term here, a lot of characters, then your label in the plan is going to have a long character string. Okay, So we want something short and sweet. And you'll see where that word actually shows up in one of the labels. Okay? Now, you don't have to create any styles for the labels. I've provided all that in the template that we used. You remember the metric template 2020? Uh, but you certainly have to be familiar with labels. Okay? And we've worked with some. We've created some. We've modified some. Uh, the ones you need for the storm and sanitary sewer are all available and ready to go. You just have to use them. Okay. So here we're going to use SAN and for storm STM. The network parts list, this thing here, this is the virtual um, Home Depot where you get your parts from. Okay. So instead of using the standard list, I created a new one called parts. So these are the different pipe sizes, right? It's just, I'm going to the parts store instead of the standard store. Uh, and I've created a, a, a smaller uh, subset of the standard one. So it's a little cleaner, a little easier. Okay, so that's where you get your parts from. Now we're starting to integrate uh, a couple of different things. Okay, and we've already started to do this with other items, but here it gets a lot more uh, complex. Uh, if you remember when we draw the profile of the existing ground, it's a profile that has the X axis station values. That comes from the alignment database. And then the existing ground profile, those elevations come from the existing ground surface, which is in a different file, right? We're, we've shortcut that information in. So we're gonna start creating a database and referencing other databases, okay? So in this case here, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna reference the surface and I want the road surface, the corridor surface. This is the surface that the pipe network is going to get the elevation of all the tops, the elevation of all the maintenance holes at the road surface. That's this road surfaces uh, job. So that's what the surface is going to do. So by connecting to that database, wherever I draw the maintenance hole, it's going to get the elevation of the top of the maintenance hole from the surface. Okay, and I'll demonstrate that, that uh, function when we do it. The next thing we want to do is the alignment name. Okay, so for this road, I'm my main alignment is street X. Yours will be A, B, C, whatever you were assigned, whatever name you use for the main road. You should have three alignments now. You should have the main road. You should have a crescent and a cul-de-sac alignment for the corridor, okay? But right now we wanna use the main road. What does this do? Every maintenance hole now will have a station and offset relative to the road. So the maintenance, no, the maintenance hole uh, station comes from the alignment of the road center line and the offset from center comes from the alignment. So that's how you tell it to get that information. And then these two are the default label styles. So for the structure, when it says structure, it means the maintenance hole, the junction. Okay, so we're gonna use the plan style for the structure label. And in the pipe label, we're also gonna use a plan style. These are two different styles with the same name but they're different. This is the style called plan for the structure. This is the style called plan for the pipe label. So they have the same name, but they're two different things. One is a style for the structure label. One is a style for the pipe label. Okay? And they do have the same name. That may confuse you, but you just have to understand. Uh, they have the same name, but they're two different things. Okay? Any questions so far? So you have to update all of the, uh, all of the uh, fields. This one here is optional if you want to. You could type in here sanitary sewer. You know, you could put your name in here. I don't care. I, I usually leave it blank, but you, know, you could put whatever you want here. You could put the date. I should spell your name right. You can put the date. Uh, today is November 24, 20. November. And so on. Okay, this is optional. Okay, I usually leave it blank, but you can write whatever you want in there to remind you what's going on. Okay, any questions so far? And remember, if you want, you could ask a question verbally. You could unmute yourself. No questions? Okay. So when you say okay, you're going to get another dialog box. So I'm going to say okay. It's going to create, watch uh, to the left here, it's going to create the network. So it's going to create a network called sanitary. There it is. Okay. And right now there's nothing in it. Okay. But there are two parts to it. There are the pipes and the structures. This is the dialog box that just came up. Okay. And in this dialog box, what you want to look at is 
First thing we want to do is make sure that the uh, maintenance hole size is correct. So all the structures, and you have different sizes, right? You have a 1200 diameter uh, maintenance hole, a 15 millimeter diameter, 18. These are the different sizes of maintenance holes, okay? We're going to use the default. We're going to make them all 1200s, the minimum size, okay? And this is an Ontario Provincial Standard drawing specification, okay? So just use 1200. So don't change that. Here now we're going to start drafting the pipe. So every time we draw a pipe, this is the size it's going to draw. Okay. We want to start with, these are small pipes, and generally the cutoff, let me just give you this, generally the cutoff, uh, not always, but I know this is true in Richmond Hill, um, the cutoff for uh, PVC versus concrete pipe, you can use PVC, and this is a sanitary sewer, so remember we're using a 200, then we're going with 250, we can go to a 300, then a 375, uh, a 450, and usually the 525 is the last size for PVC. Beyond that, you want to use concrete. So the 600 is concrete. Okay? I believe that's correct. Or it might be 525. We'll have to read the standard. But generally it says that after a certain size, so you can use plastic. And then once you get into the big sizes, you can use concrete. So I know that our pipes are going to be PVC. So there's two categories when you're choosing your pipe. There's two sizes of different materials. So let's go back to here. See here the default is concrete. I'm going to change that. I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to collapse the concrete pipes, and I'm going to go to uh, PVC. By default, it's the concrete pipes that comes up. So you have to turn this off, expand this one, and choose. And remember, our first pipe is a 200. Remember, I'm starting at the top. The first pipe is a 200. So now I can start digitizing the system. Okay, so I'm going to start here. I'm going to click at, to the center of the maintenance hole. Click, and you're just snapping. Right? I've got my O snap to center. Okay. Ignore the errors. It's upset because of the inverts. Well, we haven't designed the inverts yet. So just ignore the errors as you're doing this. When I click on the next maintenance hole, watch what happens. And notice there's a label already, structure 85. When I click here, it puts in a label. The length is determined because it knows the distance between the two circles. It knows the size, comes from this default. It knows the material. The SAN here comes from the name of the system, which I typed in, and then it tells me what the slope is. Okay, don't worry about the slope. It's going to be wrong. The inverts are wrong. Just the size is correct so far. Okay, so now the next pipe I know is a 250. While I'm still drafting the network, I can change the size on the fly. I don't have to stop drawing. So before I pick this one, I'm going to change the pipe to a 250. Right, so now the next pipe I draw is going to be a 250. So I'm going to snap to this maintenance hole. You'll notice this one now is a 250. 250, the structure labels overlapping, no, no matter. And I'm just going to click all the way to the end. So I'm going to snap to this one. I'm going to snap to this one. I'm going to snap to this one. And then at the end, there's no circle at the end. So I'm just going to use the end point of the pipe, the ND, and I'm going to snap. Okay, so I've got my last structure. Okay, and then when you're done, just hit enter. And now it's digitized the system. Okay. Ignore the errors. Okay. These errors are uh, warning you about the depth of the pipe and one of them is flowing backwards. We haven't designed that yet, so don't worry about this. Okay. So if you look at your sanitary system, you'll see all the pipes. Okay. You'll see all the pipes that you just uh, created. And then if you go to structures, you'll see all the structures that you created. And you can see the default names, right? Structure 85, 85. The next one is structure 86, 86. The next one is structure... 87, the next one is structure 86, uh, 88. So they're in numerical order from the beginning. The first one gets the first number. Why did it start at 85? Because when I started doing this, I've done, I've done this demo so many times, I, I, never, I forget to go back and reset the start number. Okay? When you do this for the first time, it should start at structure one. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter because we're going to change the name anyway. Okay? So remember the naming convention? We're going to start at the beginning with existing maintenance hole, and then we're going to call the first structure one, two, three, four, five, and then my last one is six. So the first one I drew is structure uh, is maintenance hole number six A. If you remember the naming the naming convention, let's go through that again before I change that. So the naming convention is this: if you have uh, if this is the existing sewer, and I've got one, two. One, two, uh, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, right? We start here. The first one, the existing one, is going to be called existing maintenance hole A for sanitary. And then this one's going to be MH1A, MH2A, MH3A, MH4A, MH5A, and the last one for me is MH6A. Some of you may only have four maintenance holes. Some of you may have five. Some of you may have three, depending on your layout. It's the luck of the draw, unfortunately. Some of you may have one or two more pipes than other people, but it's just the luck of the draw. Those with more pipes have a little more work to do, but they're going to learn a little bit more. So there's a, there's a, there's a bit of a, uh, an upside to doing a little more work. Okay? Uh, but the procedure is the same. Okay? And because it's not much more, one or two more pipes, it's not a big deal. Okay? So not everybody's doing the same number of pipes. So pay attention to the number of maintenance holes. So the first one that I digitized for me is six and five, four, three, two, one. So if you remember the order in which I, I did that, I can now change the actual name of the structure. And this is the beauty of it. Don't change the label. See this? This, this white, let me, let me get rid of the, the red stuff. I'm going to, um, I'm going to turn off. I'm going to freeze the layer that I use to digitize. I don't need to see this anymore, right? Here's my system now. So this first structure, right, if you list it, the name of the structure, the name of the structure is structure 85. And the label reflects that. So here's something you have to get used to. If I want to change what it says in the label, I have to rename the structure. So the object needs to be updated. And then the label for it will reflect those changes. Okay. So what am I saying? Don't change the label. Change the database that the label's getting the information from. So here we do, here, here's how you do it. So if I go to the structure, if I click on the structure and I type in um, right click and I say structure properties, it gives me all the data for the structure. Here's the name. This should be maintenance hole six, oops, six A. When I say, okay, watch what happens. The label reacts. So I rename the structure, and then the label pulling that information from the database will now show the new name. And you have to do that for each one. Okay. So that's maintenance hole six. The next one is maintenance hole five, and so on. Now you could do it here. Notice the database is reacting as well. See this? Now this says 6A because I changed the structure. You have a couple of uh, options. If you remember, you guys have taken GIS. Did you take your GIS course yet? Have you taken a GIS course? Okay. So in GIS, you'll remember there's the drawing space and then there's the records, right, with all the fields. You can update the database information from the uh, records or directly in the drawing, right? So I went to the drawing, right click, and I went to the structure property, and I changed the name here. You could do it in the database. So watch this one. This one here should be 5A. So I know the next one. I remember I digitized them in order. So 86, 87, 88. I can just change this to MH5A. And when I hit enter, watch what happens. It changes the name of the label in the, in, the, uh, in the plan view, in the drawing space. So this would be MH4, 4A. That'll change this one. Here's 4A. And then the next one is 5A, uh, sorry, 3A, 3A, and then the next one is 2A, this one here, and H2A, so there's two, and then this one is one, and then that one is existing. Now, again, you could do it from the database, or you can do it from the actual item. If I go to the structure properties, I know this one now is MH1A. So you can change the stuff either from the plan directly by touching the one you want or from the database, right? And in either case, you'll see the, 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 the record updates if you do it in the plan. And if you do it in the record, then the plan will update, okay? Again, I'm not changing the label. I'm changing the name of the structure and then the label reflects that, okay? Any questions about that? Any questions about the either the labeling convention? Always start at the bottom, work your way upstream. So that the high invert is that is the higher maintenance hole number, or how to update the structure name. 
Now we're not gonna do that to the pipes, okay? The pipe names, and you'll notice here if I go to pipes, the pipes also have names. We're not gonna change these names because those labels, there's those, the name of the pipe never comes into the label, okay? So you'll notice each label has the length with the symbol M dash, then the size 250, and then MM uh, diameter space, then the material, then a space, then the name, S-A-N, then a space, and then the at symbol with a space, and then the slope of the pipe to two decimal places with a percent sign. I just wanna show you, you're not gonna change this. I just wanna show you how that label looks, okay? That's the information you see, but watch the programming for it. So I'm gonna go to edit the label text, okay? Don't do this. This is the actual function for getting all that information, okay? Here it is. This is looking for the two-dimensional length from center to center from the actual location of the each end of the pipe. Then you'll see it's hard-coded. The meters dash, M dash, that's hard-coded. It's just raw text. Then the inner pipe diameter. Then we have millimeters with the uh, CAD uh, code for uh, for the uh, degrees uh, for the uh, diameter symbol with a space so this is ha all hard coded okay, then you see the material that's getting that from the database so i know that it's pvc not concrete then there's a space there's a hard coded space then the network name that's where the san comes from then we have space at space that's all hard coded doesn't change and then the slope of the pipe to two decimal places so that's the code that gives you this label okay and i created it for you you don't have to create it you just use it it's called plan. Same thing with the maintenance hole name, right? This is called plan. It's very simple. It just gets the name of the uh, structure. You could add other things to it, and you'll see in the profile when we do that. So now I have the name of each structure. And the way we describe it, you might have seen this in MPT already. If I want to talk about this pipe, I talk about the maintenance hole numbers. Pipe from maintenance hole 1A maintenance hole 1A to existing maintenance hole A. Okay, so to describe this pipe, we actually talk about the name of the structure at each end. Okay, and you'll see that when we do the spreadsheet work next semester. Okay, any questions so far? I'm gonna save my drawing before I screw something up. I'm gonna get rid of this. The digitizing of the storm sewer is exactly the same. Okay, so all that's left to do now is some layer control, make sure things are on the correct layer and then uh, we can uh, we can design or calculate the inverts any questions keep in mind these uh, labels are dynamic watch see the length of this pipe 79 uh, 74.9 if i was to move one of the structures if i click on the maintenance hole don't touch the pipes. Click on the maintenance hole. If I move the maintenance hole because it's in the wrong spot, watch the length of the pipe. 80.8. It's dynamic. It's constantly updating the data if you make changes to the geometry. Okay. When you want to move a maintenance hole, if you click on the maintenance hole and move just the maintenance hole, the pipes are still connected to it. So they actually react as well. If you click on the pipe and then move the end of the pipe, now you've disconnected the system, so be careful about that. If you know you want to move the maintenance hole and the pipes connected to it, just move the maintenance hole, right? Click on it, go into the grip, and then move the structure, and the pipes will stay connected to it. If you do it by the main, if you do it by the pipe, it'll disconnect. Okay, so just be mindful of that. These are some of the uh, details of how the database uh, structure works. You're going to have to get used to them if you've never used this type of da a database before. And I'm trying to point out all, all the, the little things that you're going to encounter. Some of them are intuitive and others are a total mystery unless somebody explains it to you. Okay, So I'll do my best to show you how the system works, how it reacts to what you want to do uh, as much as possible. I can't teach you everything because I don't know everything. So I'll teach you the stuff that I deal with usually on most projects and anything else. We'll have to learn together if it comes up, right? But for the most part, most of what I know about the system is enough to get started and to do a design. But there are things about it that I, I'm not even familiar with because I haven't encountered them in my career, okay? But the general day-to-day -day stuff, obviously, I'm pretty well versed in, okay? So I'll do my best to explain as much as I can 
in the time we have in this course. More about this next semester uh, for sure, okay? But the basics will come in this course. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is uh, make sure that everything is on the proper layer. And I would do this for each system. I would do the sanitary system, clean up the layer control, and then do the storm system separately. Don't create both databases, because if you do, you'll mix them up. If you notice, I'm gonna list. I'm gonna list the pipe, it's on layer zero. I'm gonna list the label, it's also on layer zero. I'm gonna list the structure, it's on layer zero, and I'm gonna list the structure label, it's all on layer zero. There are four items here. There's a pipe and a structure. Those should be two different layers. And then the label for each should be on separate layers. So there should be four layers here right now. Okay. And I've given that information on the assignment. So if we go to assignment five, I don't think I posted this yet, but I'll show you. In assignment five, I give you the layer breakdown. Okay. So the layers from sanitary are here. I think they're already in the drawing. I'm going to check. So the storm, the sanitary sewer maintenance hole has a layer and the sanitary sewer maintenance hole label, the text has a layer, the pipe has a layer, and the pipe label has a layer. So there are four label, four layers for the plan items. In the profile, there's only two, and I'll get to that a little bit later. Okay, so there's four layers, and I believe these layers are already in the drawing. So let me just check that. If I go to my layer control. Whoops, if I go to my layer control, I don't want to dock it, sorry. Ah, don't want to dock this. Sorry, here's my layer control. So I wanna look, see, here it is, yeah. So you'll see sanitary, maintenance hole, maintenance hole text, pipe, pipe text. Those are the four layers that everything should go on. Okay, so here's how I do that. There are four different items. So watch this, I'm gonna pick the pipe. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna select similar, sound familiar? So now I've selected all the pipes on layer zero. And this is why you don't wanna do sand and storm at the same time. Otherwise it'll select all the pipes for sanitary and storm because they're all on the same layer. So I do one system, I fix the layer names and then I do the other system because by default, everything shows up on layer zero. Okay, so I've got all the pipes now. I'm going to change the pipes go on, not layer zero, but on a layer called, on a layer called C, sanitary sewer pipe right all the pipes go on that layer and there they are then i'm going to go to the structures so i'm going to click on the maintenance hole right click select similar all the structures on layer zero and if you had storm they would all get selected so this is why you want to do it separately this one here you put it on a layer for the structure for the maintenance hole structure which would be here the structure maintenance hole for sanitary and then you want to do the same for the labels. Now, if I go to the pipe label and I right click, select similar, it only selects the pipe label, not the structure label. It knows they're two different things, even though the name of the, of the style is the same. So these should be on the storm sewer pipe label, pipe text. And then lastly, the label for the structure, select similar and then put these on the maintenance hole text layer. Now I have four different layers. To double check, I always do this. I turn them off. I should have to turn off four layers to see nothing in red. So the label for the maintenance hole and the maintenance hole, the label for the pipe and the pipe, right? I just turned all four off. So it's always good to check because the colors are the same. Okay? So anyway, now everything's on the correct layer. There uh, are all the... Six maintenance holes on the sanitary pipe already. Or do we have to create them? You have to digit, when you digitize the system, remember I traced the system from the, from the cul-de-sac to the intersection. When you click on those circles all the way down from the top to the bottom, it creates the structures. Then you just have to rename them. So you get, you get, both, you get both the maintenance hole and the pipe at the same time. And you just have to change the name of each structure. Okay, but don't worry about the pipe names. They don't they don't come into play, so we don't worry about it. Okay, so here we have everything on different layers. Okay, now before I draw this in the profile, which is ultimately what we're after, I want to uh, design the inverts. Okay, so let me go back to my design. Oops, I'm going to go back to here. So my existing invert, right? So I've got a pipe coming out this way. I have an existing 300 
millimeter diameter pipe. And I know that the upstream, the start of this pipe, I know that invert. It's in the survey data, right? I pro I'm providing it in that list. So I know my design starts at 158.24. Uh, That's what I've been given. Remember that table I gave? Let me just remind you. This is the table I provided. Uh, this information here. Remember, everybody has their own thing. So whatever topo number and site letter you have. So if you were assigned D5, these are the only two numbers you need to concern yourself with. The top number is the existing storm invert, and the bottom number in the box is the existing sanitary invert. Okay, there's the legend at the bottom, and these are the two numbers. These are the if you're if you're five topo D site, these are the only two numbers on this table you need to concern yourself with. Okay, so I have my sanitary invert. I just drew it for you on my uh, on the uh, screen there. Right, so I know my start invert. Now what I want to do is, I, and I've already done this, I'm not going to do it again today, right? But I've done my calculations on paper like I suggested you do. And I know what all the inverts elevate, all the invert elevations are because I calculated them, right? My start and end, start and end, start. And end. I know all my inverts. I, however, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this aside, right? So I'm not going to use these inverts. I'm going to calculate them and I'll show you how in the database, okay? All I know is this first invert. Okay? So let's pretend you don't have this information. Right? How would you do it using the database? I will refer back to this to make sure that the numbers I calculated by hand are in fact what the software is going to do for me. Okay? And then it'll give you a level of comfort and confidence that what the software is doing is what you expect it to do. Okay? So you don't have to do this every time, but it's a good thing to have in front of you so that you have a level of comfort. Okay? So I, I, again, you don't need to do this. Right? This is something I suggested. You all did it. I'm going to refer to it and just double check that my what I'm getting is what in fact the software is producing. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Did uh, how many of you? Uh, let me do a quick poll. I'm just curious. Uh, this is doesn't matter. Uh, Sorry, did you? I can't spell. Did you calculate the inverts? Did you take the time? You can be honest here. I'm not going to check it. I don't care whether you did it or not. I just want to have a sense. How many people did it and how many didn't? Okay. Okay. If you choose not to do it, I, again, you know, it looks like most of you have not. That's fine. I don't care. I'm not going to mark whether you did or didn't. It's just a suggestion. I still, I still recommend you calculate it manually so that you can see what you're getting in Civil 3D versus what you should get. It's always good to check. I have enough confidence in the software that I know it's going to give me the right answers, but I, on occasion, I still check it to make sure there's nothing out of whack. Okay, so for those of you who haven't done it, I strongly recommend you do it, okay, because it's going to give you a level of comfort with the software. Okay, another thing to, work, uh, to talk about now is, again, some more software function. So on the database, when we talk about pipes, uh, I'm going to draw this in profile. Profile. So in the pipe database, let's suppose uh, we have a pipe like this. Here's the pipe. Right, it's flowing this way. Right, so this is vertical here, right? This is the uh, station versus elevation. It's the profile. If it's flowing this way, we have this end and this start. So this is the start, this is the end. We also have a slope. I'm just gonna put a percent grade there. There are three things that make up the pipe's geometry. There's the start invert, there's the end invert, and then there's the slope of the pipe. There are three things, they all work together. If I change the start invert, it's gonna keep the end and change the slope. If I change the end invert, it's going to keep the starting invert, and it'll change the slope. So if I change this number, the pipe will react like this. Let's say I, I raise this elevation. If I raise the uh, start invert, it's going to do this. The pipe's going to get steeper. If I lower the start invert, the pipe's going to get flatter, but it'll maintain the end invert. The opposite's true here. If I change the end invert, if I lower the end invert, the pipe's going to get steeper. 
And if I raise the end invert, the pipe's going to get flatter. So that's the relationship between those marks. If I change one of the inverts, the other one will remain fixed and it'll adjust the slope. It'll recalculate the slope because it knows the distance. The, it knows the planned distance between the two based on the ends. It knows the northing and easting in the plan view. So it knows the distance. That's the run. If you change the inverts, it changes the rise. Rise over run will change the slope and it'll update that for you. Okay. So if you change one of the inverts, it'll keep the opposite one, the other one, and it'll change the slope of the pipe. Okay. Now here's the other trick. If you change the slope, if you update the slope, it will change the start or the end depending on where you type this in. So there's two ways of typing in the slope. You can type in the slope by keeping the start invert and then it'll change the end. Or you can change the slope by keeping the end invert and it'll adjust the start. Okay, if you remember the profile, remember the profile had a grade in and a grade out column? And we typed everything in the grade out. Remember the profile went down to the low point, half percent steeper through the elbow, half percent steeper through the uh, cul-de-sac. Remember we typed in grade out, negative 0.5, positive 0.5, positive 1.5, positive 0.5, positive 1.25. Every time we typed in uh, a slope, it changed the next elevation. So it keeps this. It recalculates this. Then from here, I type in the next slope, it recalculates this. I type in the next slope, it recalculates this, and so on. So you're going in the direction of positive change. The pipe has a similar function. If you type in the slope and keep the start, it'll change the end. And if you type in the slope keeping the end, it'll update the start invert. And that's the relationship. So there's two places to type this in. I'll show you in the database. Keep the start or keep the end. Okay, let me show you what that looks like in the database. So I want to first design the first the first uh, invert. Let's start with the first invert. So if this invert is 158.24, what should my next invert be? Anybody remember? Based on the drop? Remember all my pipe sizes are 250, except for the last one is a 200. All right, this is a 250 all the way along. What's the difference in elevation between this start and this end invert based on the change in direction? Anybody remember? Yeah, it's nine centimeters, 0 0.09, 0 0.09. Okay. Now this information is worth calculating every time. So if I take 24 and I add nine, I get 158. Uh, 158, uh, 833. That's an 8, sorry. That's an 8. 158, 33. So I get 158, uh, 33. And that's what I want to now type into the end, end of the first pipe. I'm going to design from the bottom up. I traced it. I, I digitized in the direction of flow. But now I'm going to calculate the inverts from the bottom up. Okay. So I'm starting here. So here we go. Here's how you do that. Go to this pipe, click on the pipe, the first pipe, right click and go to pipe properties. And you're gonna get this dialog box. Again, don't worry about the name, leave it alone. We go to part properties, the next tab. And there's a lot of information here. Okay? Not all of it is relevant. Some of it you can change, some of it you can't. For instance, the structure name at the beginning, the start, see here it says start. The structure name at the start is maintenance hole one. The structure name at the end is maintenance hole uh, A, the existing maintenance hole. So everything you see is kind of dark gray, right? Dull gray. You can't change. It's just reading the information. If you want to change any of this, you have to go and change it in the source. Okay. Notice here you'll see the pipe flow direction from start to end, right? You can reverse it if you want, but typically we go start to end. Okay, so that everything I say, if you digitize it in the direction of flow, will have the same terms I'm about to use. Uh, notice that the flow direction is start to end, right? So the pipe flow direction is also going to be the same. I want these to match so that the, the start of the pipe is the start all the time. Okay? You'll see here stuff you already designated. It's going to get the reference surface. It's going to use the corridor surface. And the reference alignment is street X or A, B, C, D, whatever you were assigned. So that you actually created that connection when you digitize the system in the first place. Okay. 
So now what we want to look at is the end invert. Now there's there's more than just inverts, right? This is the start invert. This is the end invert. That's the first one we're going to change. You can go with the crown of the pipe, or you can go with the uh, center line of the pipe. Now the crown of the pipe, when they use the word crown, they mean the obvert, the top inside. They say crown, but really the crown is the top outside of the pipe. You can also use the center line which is the spring line elevation, the center point of the pipe. So that's another way of doing it. I typically don't use that. Usually we deal with the inverts. So these are the only two you need to concern yourself with. So the first invert, the first invert is the end. Remember the end of the pipe. I wanna know, put in that invert. So I type it in here. At the end invert, I type in here what we just calculated, which was 158.33. Okay, and when I hit, and when I hit enter, watch what happens, nothing. It accepts that value. Now you'll notice the slope didn't adjust, right? I changed one of the inverts, the slope didn't change. It should. Now that I typed in the end, when I hit apply, when I hit apply, it's gonna recalculate. The, I changed one of the inverts, I changed this one, it's gonna keep this, and based on these two inverts, it's gonna recalculate the slope. So first I'm gonna change the end of the pipe, I'm gonna hit apply, watch what happens to the slope. Okay, the slope now is flatter, right? I'll try and keep this from jumping around, sorry. The slope here is now flatter, 0 0.14, 0 0.14. One is positive, one is negative. I want to keep this elevation. I don't want to change the end of the pipe. I want to update the start, but I'm going to calculate it. So from the end, I want to change the slope so that the start changes. So I'm going to hold the end. So right here, I want this to be half percent, 0. 5, uh, 0 0.50, half percent. When I hit enter, watch what happens, nothing. Okay. I have to hit the apply button to do the math. When I hit apply, it's going to hold the end, it's going to hold this number, it's going to recalculate based on half percent, and it's going to update this number. Okay, watch, and then this one will also be negative 0.5, apply. The 33 is still there. This number is different. The slope now is half percent either way, right? Start downstream is negative, upstream is positive slope. Okay, so you type in the invert at the end, you hit apply. Then you change the slope holding the end and you hit apply and now you have the start of this pipe. That's the number you add the drop to for the end of the next pipe. So here's what I like to do. I'm gonna select the start of this pipe, I'm gonna control C. I'm gonna copy that into the uh, memory, uh, my, uh, my uh, clipboard memory. So I'm gonna copy this, so I'm hitting control C. I'm gonna say, okay, this pipe's done. Okay, notice the slope changed. I'm gonna to go to the next pipe. I'm gonna right click. And I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna hit the pipe, right click, I'm gonna to go to pipe properties. And I'm going to go to the end of this pipe, I'm gonna paste, control V. That's the invert of the pipe. Now they can't be the same. I don't want them to be the same, so I'm gonna go back to my sketch. I'm gonna go back to my sketch. If I have this and I paste it here, they can't be the same. What's the change in elevation between this one and this one? How much higher does this have to be relative to this? It's not straight through. There's actually a, a bit of a curve, so let's go back to my drawing. Right, I'm talking about this one right here. It's gonna be six centimeters. So whatever this number is, I'm gonna add six centimeters. So seven zero plus zero six is seven six. See that? I just changed it. So I pasted the start and then I added the six centimeters. Samuel, it's six. Six is the, ch the change for a 45 degree. The pipes are the same size. So the difference in pipe size is actual. Yeah, be careful. Okay, so now that I've got the invert at the end of this little short pipe that I want, right? I've got the invert of this pipe. I'm gonna hit apply. It's gonna change the slope, watch. Okay, so now the slope is a little bit steeper, fine. Now I wanna calculate the start of this pipe by holding the end. I don't want this number to change, so I type hold the end. I change this and I'm always positive. Uphill is positive, 0.5. And it's gonna recalculate the start. It's gonna keep this and calculate the number above. Apply. And there's the start. That's the start of this little pipe, the invert right here. I'm going to take that. I'm going to uh, clipboard copy, control C. I'm going to say OK. And notice the label reacts. I go to the next pipe. 
right click pipe properties I'm going to type into the end the start of the last pipe is going to be the end of the next upstream pipe so i'm going to paste here but i can't paste it exactly i have to add the minimum drop what's the minimum drop right here Again, it's six centimeters because it's a 45 degree change in direction. So I'm gonna add six to this, six centimeters. So 84 plus six is going to be 90. Everybody agree? 84 plus six is 90. Okay, then I hit enter, nothing happens. I'm going to apply, so it's gonna change the slope now. I wanna keep that number and calculate the start of that pipe. So I'm going to change the hold the end. This should be 0.5. It's going to recalculate this 152. Apply. So there's the start of this pipe. I'm going to copy this. You can do you know, right click copy or control C. I like to use control C so I can use both hands. I'm going to say OK. Now I know that pipe's done. I go to the next pipe, this little guy here. Oops. I'm going to go to the pipe, not the label. Right click, pipe properties. The start of the last pipe is the end condition of this pipe plus the minimum drop. What would the minimum drop here be? Three, six, or nine. Yeah, it's almost straight, but when it's not exactly straight, I always err on the side of caution, okay? And I'm not gonna measure the angle. Yeah, it's less than 45, but it's not straight, so I'm gonna use six again. So what's eight plus six? 18 plus six is 24. So I've added, I'm gonna apply, it's gonna change the slope. I'm gonna change the slope of the pipe to 0.5. I'm gonna apply and it's gonna update the start invert. That, that 316 is gonna change. It's now 324, I'm gonna copy. Can you not change the slope and end elevation at the same time? Well, you can only change one thing and then adjust the other thing. Okay, so this is the method that I prescribe you use. If you want, you can type in all your inverts and then it'll give you the slopes. But when you round the inverts, then the slopes might not come out exactly 0.5. It might come up 0.51 or 0.49. So I always type one invert in, put the slope in and accept the start invert. Type the end, enter, uh, change the slope, enter, take the start to the next pipe and continue. Okay, so it's kind of this piggyback process. Okay, so now I'm gonna copy this, control C, and say okay. So this little pipe is done, I go to the next one. Right click, pipe properties. This is the, the start of the last pipe is the end of the next pipe, so I'm gonna paste it. Again, the drop here is going to be six centimeters, right? It's not exactly straight, so I'm gonna use six. So 32 plus six is 38. Right, so there's the invert. I'm going to apply that number, changes the slope. I want to update the start by changing the slope, holding the end, 0.5, and I'm going to apply. And now here's the invert at the start of the this pipe, which is the end of the next pipe. Control copy, control C, say OK. Go to the last pipe, right click properties. I'm going to type in the end, and now I have to put in the minimum drop. What's the minimum drop here? It is straight through. Claire, Claire, you're exactly right. The difference in pipe size is a 200 versus a 250. It's actually 0 0.05. So Claire's got it right. So I'm going to add to the end 0 0.5. So 60 plus 0 0.5 is 6.5. I'm going to apply. And what's the slope of this pipe? one percent so this i'm going to change it to one percent again i'm holding the end because i want to recalculate the start one i hit apply and it recalculates now i have the start of this pipe and i'm done that's my design this is starting at the beginning at the at the at the existing maintenance hole minimum slope minimum drop this is the lowest this number right here is the lowest that this invert can get i can't go any lower or i'll compromise one of the drops or the slopes of the pipe, okay? I can be higher, but I can't be any lower. So what we're doing is putting in the minimum slope, the lowest possible pipe system, starting with minimum slopes and minimum drops. Yeah, this pipe size is a 200. 
this pipe size is a 250. So the difference in pipe size is 0 0.05 or 50 millimeters. So 50 millimeters is the difference in pipe size so that you can obverts. Three centimeters is the difference in inverts based on the change in direction, which is zero straight through. So O3 versus O5, I choose the bigger one. Remember, Stephen, there's two categories, right? Sometimes the minimum drop based on a change in direction is the higher number. Sometimes the difference in pipe size is the higher number. In this case, it's the difference in pipe size. So now I say, OK. OK, yeah. All right. So there we go. So now I've designed my system. OK, now what I do next is all drafting. I'm not changing the design. I just want to see it. I want to see this in the profile. In the plan view, everything's fixed. All the sizes are in. All the slopes are correct, half percent half percent, uh, half percent. They're all half percent except this one. This one is, uh, whoops, one percent. Okay, so the design is all good to go. Now I wanna draw those pipes in the profile. Okay, and here's the magic, watch this. I'm gonna click on the structure, right click, select similar. So that gets all the structures. Then I click on one of the pipes, right click, select similar. So now I've selected all the pipes and all the structures. Okay, now instead of going to the project parts to profile, remember that function? Let me go back. Remember, if I want to draw something in the plan to the profile, I can use this function. You remember this? Uh, profile, remember this? Project objects to profile view. We use that when we drew the points at the beginning and end of curve for the uh, profile. Pipes. Uh, and structures have their own function for doing the exact same thing. Okay, so we're not we're not going to use this, although the result will look a lot like this, a lot this, a lot like that. So what we do is we pick all the structures, right click, we go to uh, select similar, right? So that gets all the structures. So we click on one pipe, right click, select similar, and that's why you want them on different layers. You don't want to do this with the sand and storm all mixed up together. So I do this once and watch this, right click. Oh, what happened? Try that again. Sorry. Select similar. Select similar. Right click and then draw parts in the profile view. That's the function for drafting from plan to profile for pipe networks. It doesn't come from up here like the other stuff. Okay, so we do this. Draw the parts in the profile view. So we click that. And then you pick the profile view. I want to draw them here. So I pick the grid and it draws the whole system. Okay. You don't have to draw the lines. You don't have to worry about vertical exaggeration. It does everything. Okay. So, and you'll see that the structure, now look at that. See that gap? Notice that the structure doesn't touch the profile. Anybody know why? Any idea why? Any idea why this doesn't touch this? It's actually drawing it correctly. It looks wrong. Any, any idea? No? No? I'll show you why. Let me show you. So the profile, remember the profile of the road, right? Down half, up half, 1.5, up half, 1.25. When it draws the maintenance hole at each position, Yes, Sumitra, you got it. When you look at that cross section, the road section looks like this, right? So we're drawing this point in the profile, but the maintenance hole is off one and a half meters either side, right? The sanitary. So the elevation one and a half meters away down at 2% is actually a little bit lower than the crown. And that's why the maintenance hole is going to appear as if it's below the center line profile. So when you draw the profile, the, the, the top of the maintenance hole is always going to be a little bit below on a typical section setup. And that's why. If it was super elevated, if the road was super elevated, then this would be the profile. The pipe would be, one of them would be lower and one of them would be higher than the crown profile. Right? So it's doing the right thing. It just looks odd. If, not, if you don't understand where that information is coming. Okay? Very good, Sumitra. All right. So let's go back and look at that. Right? So these are all good. Look at this one. The stubby one. Why is that short? Any idea? Why is that not touching the profile of the road? Do 
The other ones all look good, right? They're all touching or just below, right? They all look like they're in the right spot. Anybody know why? Any guesses? Might be faster to tell me verbally if you want to. Uh, not the contour. It's because, I'll show you in the plan view, it's because if I look at my surfaces and I look at my corridor surface, here's my corridor surface. This maintenance hole is not in the range of the corridor. As a matter of fact, the profile design starts at the edge of pavement. So this one is out of range. So it doesn't know what its elevation should be because there's no surface there. So it just uses a default depth, and that's why it looks short and stubby. And remember, by default, we connected this database with the corridor surface called roads. Right? So all the maintenance holes are looking to the road corridor surface to get its top elevation. This one's out of range, so it just puts some depth and looks silly. So here's how you fix that. Okay, here's one of the tricks. If you click on the structure, whether you do it in the profile or the plan, doesn't matter, it's the same database you're tapping into. You click here, you right click, and you go to the network, uh, to the uh, structure property. This is where you change the name, remember? And you go over to the part property for the structure this time, and you tell it to do something different. I don't, don't get your elevation from the road surface. Get your elevation from the existing ground. You're in the original surface. Say OK. Say OK. And now it references the existing ground. Notice it's a little bit higher. It's not below, it's above. And what's going to happen here is because, let's go back to the drawing, the elevation of the road, right? Again, we're talking about the center line of the road. Let me bring that back, the corridor. The elevation of the profile is at the center. The elevation of this maintenance hole is actually a little bit higher because the profile of this road is going uphill, so it's going to appear a little bit higher on center. This one's probably going to be lower, right, if the profile of this road is falling in this direction. Yeah. So why is it higher? Which question do you have, Sumitra? Why is it higher, or why do we have to change the reference? Reference or higher? How to change the reference. Yeah, you click on it, you click on the structure, right click, and go to the structure properties, and under the part properties right here, instead of the corridor surface, which is the default that we selected when we digitized, instead of doing that, if I say apply, it doesn't know what to do. There's no corridor surface out here. So really, this maintenance hole is already constructed and it's relative to the existing ground. So say, now you tell it not to get your elevation from the existing ground surface, not the corridor surface. And that's how it becomes relative to the existing ground. And the reason it's a little bit higher is because on that surface, the elevation on center here is a little bit lower than the elevation of the surface over here. And like I said, when you digitize this one, it might be a little bit lower. Okay, so that's the only one. You have to do this for the storm sewer as well. All of them will appear as if they're touching the proposed profile, except the existing sanitary and the existing storm maintenance hole. Those you have to change the reference for. So they're all going to be good, except the first two. You have to change the reference surface for the first two. And now it looks pretty good. If we go back to the document, the assignment, you'll see that the sewer wants to be all on one layer, sanitary sewer prof. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to select this because by default, list it. it's on layer zero. So I'm going to select this, right click, select similar. I'm going to take all these items in the profile, right? Even though notice here, it doesn't select them in plan. These are the profile drafted pipes. And I'm going to change the layer if it'll let me. It might not be able to mix the items. Select similar. Oh, yeah, here we go. So then we're going to change this to storm sewer profile. Okay, so they're on that profile there. So all the items, sanitary uh, maintenance holes and pipes together. In the plan view, we separate them because sometimes you want to see the underground stuff and sometimes you don't, right? So grading versus 
profile drawings. That's going to be uh, something you need to manage still. But here, everything underground is a structure and a pipe, so they can all be on one means, uh, on one uh, layer. Sorry. Okay, so that's how you draw the pipes from plan to profile. And the last thing to do is to label everything in the profile. So if you click on the maintenance hole, and I don't know if you can do them all at once. Let me try. I can't remember. It didn't used to. Uh, select similar. Add label. Oh, you have to do one at a time. Okay. Add a label for the maintenance hole. And it gives you this ugly default. We're going to change it. I click it twice over there. So this is the st standard structure label, which is, whoops, it's just ugly. So here, I'm going to change this one. The first one, I'm going to change it, and it's going to be called, not standard, but there's one called profile. Not the plan, but the profile. So here's the information. And this all comes from the database. It tells you the name of the structure. It tells you the size. You remember a 1,200 millimeter diameter maintenance hole. It tells you the top elevation. That top elevation, in this case, comes from the existing ground surface. It tells you the station value based on alignment, in my case, alignment uh, street X or ABC, whatever you're assigned. And then it gives you the invert of the pipe connected to the structure. So this is a label for the structure, but it knows that this pipe is connected to it. This pipe is connected to it, so it gives you the invert. It also references the size of this pipe, and it gives you the invert. And it tells you the compass direction. Into the maintenance hole, it's coming in from the east. If you look at it in plan view, right, for this structure, this is coming in from the east, relatively speaking. It's very close to east, so it's east. So it does all that for you in the label. Let's check the others. Okay, so what I want to do now is put this on the proper layer. So this should be on the layer for profile. Whoops. Profile. Profile text. Sanitary sewer profile text. It's also going to be red. And then you can actually use the AutoCAD match property match property to take this and match it to the other labels. It'll put it on the right layer with the right style. Okay, so now you have all your structure labels. And each one has the name, the size, the top elevation. These tops, not the first one, the rest of them are coming from the database, uh, the, the database for the road corridor surface. Okay, now leave them. See how they're all on top of each other? Don't worry about drafting it so that it looks pretty until you draw the storm sewer. Okay? Because if you move these, when you bring the other system in, they're going to be on top again. So I would uh, just bring all the labels in and then worry about their legibility after. Okay? And we're not done yet. We need to label the pipes. I'm going to label the pipes. Select similar. There's a pipe label for the pipe. And it's ugly too. We're going to fix that. So I'm going to label each one with this default style. So each pipe gets a label. And then I'm going to change it because it's ugly. I'm going to change this. And instead of the standard style, I'm going to use the profile label. And you'll notice it looks a lot like this, the plan view stuff. Right? And it should be on the layer called, it should be on the same layer as this. So I think I can match properties from here to here just to get the layer to be the same. And then I can match properties to get the layer and the style for the pipe label. And again, don't worry about the overlap just yet. I think I picked something twice here. All right, so each pipe has a label now. One, two, three, four five, six. Okay, so they're all there. Again, just bring them in and wait. When you bring in the other system, all the text is going to be on top of each other. You have to move them so it's legible. And it, here's what it's going to look like in the end. I'll show you this. So in the assignment, which I don't think I posted yet, in the assignment on the last page, it shows you what it's supposed to look like. See how I moved everything so that the text is legible? Everything red is sanitary. Everything green is storm. Okay, so you want to make sure everything is legible. So, you know, so move the label up above the pipe or below. Uh, move the, the labels for the maintenance holes, one above the other, and so on. Or you could put it wherever you want, as long as it's legible. If it's on top, if you can't read it, then it's no good. You're going to lose marks for presentation. Okay, so this is the final look of the drawing. All your pipes with all the labels, all your maintenance holes with all the labels. Okay, so I just produced all the data in red. 
but I didn't move the labels. And I won't do that until I bring in my, sand, my storm system labels. Once I have all the labels that are going to appear in the profile, then I'll worry about moving them so that everything is legible, right? So if you click on the label, you can grab the grip and move the stuff around. Don't waste your time now because you might put it here and then the storm comes through and it's gonna be on top again. So don't bother the drafting of the label positions until you bring in all of the, um, all of the uh, pipe labels for both systems. Okay, let's save that. So I've done my entire sanitary system except for the profile drafting. There's some plan drafting to do as well. Let me get rid of this. Once you produce both systems, let me use this. Once you produce both systems, uh, you then, whoops, you then need to go back and clean up some of your drafting. Uh, that's new information, new layers. You might have to go back to your plan profile, right? So you'll see the information in the profile, in the plan profile. In the grading plan, you have to go back and now freeze everything underground. If you freeze the pipe and you regen, the label disappears. So now nothing underground is showing. So you may have to go back and revisit some of your other drawings to make sure that if something shouldn't be there because it's underground, the grading plan, make sure you freeze that layer again. If in the profile plan view you need to see something or not see something you can adjust it after okay so we're not done with the presentation quite yet especially the grading plan. so that's how you create the database that's how you design and calculate your inverts and that's how you draw everything in the profile view okay and once you have all uh, all two systems sand and storm you can do your visibility drafting, make sure none of the labels are on top of each other so that it's legible. And even this, see this default position for the label? I would move it up above the pipe, right? If, if you can avoid the, the top of the pipe going through the label, it'll be easier to read. So you wanna clean it up. There's an example of how I want it to look, right? Put the label above or below and make sure that the labels are not on top of each other. Okay? Any questions? Okay, I wanna do one, one last thing. I wanna show you one last thing. You're designing the pipe in the plan view, right? And uh, let me just check this, let me see if my corridor is clean. Okay. So you're designing everything in plan and you know everything you do especially with Civil 3D is in 3D is uh, spatial reference so watch this this is just the last this is the icing on the cake you don't have to do this but it's always fun to see. I click my surface I click my maintenance hole select similar I click my pipe, select similar. So now I've got all the structures in the pipes for sanitary and I've got my road surface corridor. Right click, object viewer. What you're actually creating is a 3D model of the sewer. And the beauty about this is that when you have both systems, I've only done one, when you have both systems, you can do a visual inspection for clash detection to see if the sewers are bumping into each other. You can see the maintenance hole is kind of sticking out of the out of the uh, out of the surface here, right? So you can see what you've created underground. It's hard to see whether this pipe is a little bit steeper than this one, but there it is. So that's the 3D model. All the information to draw this is in the database, right? So you're creating this 3D model and you don't even know it. It's happening in the background, and then once you've done it. Again, you can do this with all your utilities, right? I'm showing sanitary. You could do this, add the storm to this view. If you digitize the water main in 3D, which we're not going to, but if you did, you can add that to the system. And you can add everything, your uh, utility trench for uh, hydro, your cable, bell, gas. You can add everything to it if you wanted to. And you can see everything in 3D and make sure nothing's bumping into each other. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the companies I work for actually had some some customized software that looked at all the systems in 3d together and actually found where they were actually crossing 
or crossing too close. So it looked for clearance, right? So is it a true clash? Are they actually bumping into each other? Or is it too close? Because there's minimum clearance, right? When you cross one pipe over another, you should have at least 0.3 or 0.5 meters between the barrel to barrel uh, dimension. We're not gonna deal with that this semester. Uh, we're just learning how to create this right now. Next semester, when we do both systems, we will check it for clash detection. Okay? You will be able to see it in 3D to see if anything's bumping into each other. Okay, but this is what's happening in the background. This 3D model is being created. And if I added, I could add the lot grading surface and you can see the entire proposed subdivision with all the underground pipes. Okay, so that's what's happening in the background. And you don't even know it. It's creating it based on the data you're provided, the numbers you're calculating, the information you're creating. This is what it's actually producing. Okay, and notice here that last maintenance hole the first one rather is out of range, right? So the elevation for the top of this one comes from existing ground, not proposed. So that, that to me is kind of the icing on the cake to see that everything's working properly. If you look at it from the front or from the side. I think I crashed, I crashed my system. There you go. Uh, yes. Anyway, so that's what that looks like. Figures. Last thing that happens is we crash. Uh, I'm going to ask the question here now, too. Is Civil 3D crashed while you've been using it, ever? I just had a fatal error and it all kind of disappeared. I'm just curious. Have you had a crash <laughs> all the time? <laughs> okay. I say this all the time. The software is great. It's awesome. It's a very, very good software to do this kind of work. It's not perfect. It does have some limitations. And sometimes what you try and do with it really pushes its ability. And uh, it covers 95% of what you want to do, and the other five you kind of have to improvise. And sometimes it just falls apart, like it just did there. I'm going to show the responses. It looks like 50-50. Half of you have experienced it, and some of you haven't. Does the, fair, does the fatal error actually matter? It, what, what happens is, it, is it, it, it tries to salvage the work to that point. It doesn't necessarily salvage everything. Um, so it's always a good idea either to save your work occasionally, or have the auto save on um, so that it saves automatically every five or 10 minutes so that if it crashes, you don't lose more than 10 minutes work. Um, it happened to me four door. You had to reinstall the software, oh boy. Uh, sometimes it does. So what you can do about that is um, actually recover the drawing. So let me show you how to do that. Um, instead of, uh, let, me, let me bring it, start. I'm starting AutoCAD again. Let me do this. Share my entire screen. So I'm starting AutoCAD again. And then instead of just opening the drawing, see it says in the previous session the program terminated unexpectedly, you have two options. If it tells you that because it just happened, uh, then you can go into um, you can go into here. Where is it? Uh, you can go into here, right? So that was my base drawing. And then it creates this information. Let me get rid of this. This is the actual drawing that crashed, right? And then if you look at the details, it'll tell you the date, right? So this crashed at 12.03. This backup file actually was created 12.01. So it's got some missing information that didn't save. So the back file is always being created in the background. And then the recover file is what it tries to save. So I, you know, the last time I saved was 12.03. This recover file was 1207. So this has the latest information. So I could open this and do a save as and replace this file and then delete this one. So this is the latest one, the recover file. That's, that's what, it, what it tells you. So this is the actual drawing that crashed. This is the save it tried to perform. So you could open this, do a save as, overwrite this one, and then delete this. That's how you can use that. Or if either of these is corrupt and not working, you can just rename this one. You can open it and then save as and replace the original file. So there's three options there. The auto save function, the one you want, the other one you want to look at, uh, if you go to your options, OP for options, 
sorry. Yeah, the autosave, I'll show you. Um, so if you go, let me start again. So if you type in OP for options, I think it's under uh, open and save, and then the auto save is right here. So you can tell it what file, usually it's the latest version, maintain and maintain, and then uh, where is it? You should be able to, yeah, here, every 10 minutes. So make sure this is on. By default, it typically is, and by default, it's 10 minutes. You could set this to every five minutes. So if it crashes, the most you're going to lose is five minutes work. And this is what's creating um, the autosave uh, file so that you can uh, recreate those things. Okay, so usually the default is on. Usually it's on and it's set to 10 minutes. There's a couple of things. If, the, if something happened to the, so I just crashed, right? So what you could do, and this is another way, instead of typing in open, instead of op using the open command, you can type in recover. So if you type recover, it actually performs a check of the file. So I'm going to open up my base plan. Notice the recover file is here, right? That file that it created. So I'm going to open this and I say open, and it's going to actually check the file. See here, it's validating objects, right? So this is actually creating uh, a audit of the file during the open command, right? So zero, er so it said there, uh, zero errors found, zero errors fixed. So that was good. Let me just go back here. I'll show you what that did. So it's found zero, fixed zero. If you're in the drawing and it's behaving funny, you could actually start the audit command yourself. A U D I T, audit. And then it asks you a stupid question. If it finds any errors, you want to fix them? The default should be yes. So you have to choose yes. And then it goes through the file. And it'll see if there's errors, it'll try and fix them. So as, it'll, as long as the found, the number of found equals the number of fixed, you know it's good. If you have more found and less fixed, then there's a problem. And I've never seen that. Usually when you run this, if it finds 10 errors, it usually fixes 10 errors. What are those errors? beyond my expertise. I have no idea. All I know is if it finds 10 and it fixes 10, I know the, the file's good to go. Okay. But if it, I, and, and in my 25 years, I've never seen a bunch of errors found that couldn't be fixed. So the type of error I really can't speak to, but as long as whatever it finds is errors, it fixes, uh, then you're good to go. The other thing I've noticed in the past too, when I do this is sometimes the error is in an X reference file. So then the safest thing to do is close the current drawing, run the audit command in the X reference file, close that file, then open this and run the audit here. If you leave this open while you fix the X reference file, it'll still be there. So you have to do one at a time from the root, the original file first, and then the next file it's connected to. So that might help as well. Uh, again, these are just things I've learned over time. Uh, it doesn't always apply, but uh, these are some general housekeeping rules that I, I, I use when things are acting a little bit strange. Okay, so that's how you create your database. That's how you draw it and plan, the direction you draw it in. That's how you calculate all your inverts based on the information I provided. Uh, you have to digitize both systems. You have to uh, draft them both in the profile. You have to make it look good. So there is an example on the assignment handout of what I'm looking for. This is all you need to hand in, the plan view, the plan profile, not the grading plan, uh, and everything neatly drafted in the plan view so that it's legible. Okay? And there's some tips and tricks for that, which we can discuss tomorrow. Right now, your concern should be digitizing and calculating your inverts. Okay? And then the drafting uh, will come. There's nothing to draw or show uh, until you design it all, right? So concentrate on the design and then worry about your drafting later. And notice in my in my legend, I've only got the three systems, sand, storm, and water. That's all you need to show in your legend and make sure they match. Okay. That's it for today. Uh, we can have a bit of a work session or I'll see what else I can add to the discussion for this, but that's pretty much it for pipes. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but for the most part, uh, it should go pretty quick. Um, the biggest danger, and I hope this hasn't happened to anybody, is that you're using the wrong start information. If you have the wrong topo 
and or the wrong site letter, then you're not gonna get the results I'm expecting. You're gonna have a problem with your inverts, okay? But uh, otherwise it should go pretty smooth, okay? So I'll, I'm gonna make this available. I'll make sure that everything is legible, sorry, that everything is available. Do that now. Uh, it's gonna stop recording. All right, so let me just check this session. And I'm gonna to go to assignments. So I'm going to make available assignment five. And it's due next Friday, which is the fourth. Good, okay, submit. So the assignment is available and the course documents for the assignment is also available. Module five. So under course documents, you'll see module five files. It's a zip file. And if you go to uh, assignments, you'll see assignment five uh, uh, file, the PDF for assignment five instructions. All right. Thank you, everybody, for attending. That's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.